Uh, we'll say they're livery. Okay, we're going to do another one for the wide tower. The wide tower is a major landmark in the city of in Caterport. It is not a factional headquarters, but rather a massive residential structure. Several gangs squabble for influence within. All right, uh, the wide tower we have the mining group, Havertz Brothers, and the Saltwater Army. Now, these ones we didn't see anything about their headquarters, so I'm going to put them in as organizations instead. Sorry, guys. All right, for Cater Port, let's add in a new section that says. Um, oh, what a long link. Why can't we just have this be Ah, I see, because it would make his name strange. Curious, will that break it? Let's take a look. Nope, perfect. All right, so notable locations. And then we can link those up here as well. And what would the order be here? Oh, they're in, they're in the correct order already. Notable organizations.
All right, well, anyway, uh, we'll come back to the organizations here in a second. For the time being, let's add in what they actually are. The black and blue. Not really called the brothers of black and blue or the warriors of black and blue. It's just called the black and blue. Don't cross them and you'll be bruised, I guess. All right, black and blue refers to a faction from the Tower of Black and Blue. Guess we'll want a link there. In. Oh, Kadar Port can go higher on this list. There we go. They are perhaps the most powerful faction in Kadar Port during 1478. Okay, um, and then we'll need another faction for. The KDR Mining Group. Mining Group is an industrial outfit vying for control of KDR Port for their own profit and power. Okay, next one. Oops, not a character. We want an event. Or organization, I should say. Alright, uh, organization title is Havard's Brothers. What is, the, what is their deal? We actually want to be on two. Yes. Okay. Havertz group, a religious group. Havertz brothers, a religious group that believed its leader was some spiritual guide. Religious. We're going to categorize it as a cult as well. Havertz brothers is a. Uh, Local cult within Kato Port vying for power over the city as they proclaim their master, Havard, a spiritual guide. All right. We can add a page for Havard once we, you know, once we know about, more about him from this story. Lastly, we have the Saltwater Army. Army, a mercenary outfit based in Caterport. The Saltwater Army alleges its glory days extend as far back as the fall of the Orish. Whether this is true has scholars scratching their heads. Hello, chicken with with rabies. How are you doing? Bit of a slow start tonight. That's all good.
cool. That's always fun. Do you do a lot of uh, uh, visual art for your uh, for your content for your characters? By fourteen seventy eight, salt water army is a little more than a faction fighting for power. We've just been updating um, uh, the wiki with some more information from the original kind of lives we get through stories, so. Cool. Is that for a D and D game you're a part of, or? Organizations. There we are. Army. Great. <laughs> nice. I haven't done much illustration work myself. If you see any artwork uh, for my characters on my wiki or on the book covers, they're, uh, it's actually done by a friend of mine who's a visual artist and an animator, I believe. She works in her day job. All right, I think we should update. We had a section going on the Kadar port page. I'm going to modify that with, here we go, notable organizations that are based in the city of Kedarport. Maybe that makes sense. My, the extent of my drawing is mostly maps, but I love drawing maps. All right, well, I got that section looking a little better. So we should have now lands and locations. Whole group of the things in Kadar port. <laughs> well, what were the magical properties of the salt shaker? Oops. Create a new historic entry.
The spread of Melium is the cult we've been flushing the story out for over the last few, few uh, sessions. So we better get that onto our timeline. Five fifty. Uh, let's make this more about the expansion of or the spread of million. So that would be seven thirty three. And we still think 775, but we it may wrap up sooner than that. 773, 775. Oops, that's not right, 733. This will be, let's see. Uh, important national seems good. And it is a... religious event. After rising to prominence in the city of Ith, cult of Melian, Sir John Salt Shaker of Identification, this item one held against him. <laughs> nice. So it's kind of a, yeah, like a identification spell almost. After rising prominence in the city of Ith, the cult of Melium spread rapidly over most of Radragar. As far east or west as the eye of Aga, and as far south as Belisa. Number of dividing factions eventually signaled its reformation. Awesome. How does this look now? Pretty good. All right. Um, well, Major events of the known world. Well, I guess a couple options we can uh, we can do here, Millium, or, or sorry, uh, chicken with with rabies. Um, uh, so, if you'd like, we could set up a character for you within the world of Gethra. Um, I'm tempted to make it a character who is perhaps adjacent to what is going on with the spread of Melian, because I would like to continue flushing out the uh, 700s um, period. Uh, however, that means um, if we're focusing on stuff local to you know, some of the other users' characters, there might be times where we wouldn't need you or your input, or there might be times where we do. Of course, with the whole interaction thing, you guys don't have to be like on the clock for it or anything, we can just work around whatever, or or someone else can make the decisions. But I guess it's up to you. Did you want to wait until there's some other of the others online, and we can we can work you into their kind of ongoing story, or uh, or I can work on on some of my other content and just keep uh, chatting, hanging out, see if anyone else shows up. Roll 
the dice, odds or evens. Sure. You mean in, uh, roll the dice on what I'm, what what I should do with my time here? <laughs> uh, let me just organize some of these articles that I just noticed as well for a second. What was it? Oh yes, it was in ships. I'm trying to alphabetize everything just so that it'll be easier for people to find. Gracie or Stormy Okay. Where should chicken with rabies character fit? Of course, even if we create your character kind of solo to the others, uh, we can also have, um, you know, the next time someone else comes along, we can all fit their character in around yours. It's kind of how it started with uh, the others, of course. Slowly going. Seven. Solo, let's do it. All right, so let's, uh here, why don't we look at the map here? So this is kind of the known world of Gethra so far. And we have over this historical period where we're going to fit your character in, we have the this uh, the cult of Melium kind of expanding. It starts off from the middle here in, around Ith and it expands outward into um, the rest of Radagar uh, and eventually, you know, even to the Great Isle or the Eye of Maga. But after that point, it kind of splits and fractures, and there's a kind of a, a version of it across West Radagar and and Var Nordos, and there's a, a whole fraction of it across um, the Great Isle and the Isles. So what I'm thinking is that during that time, we could have uh, we could kind of figure out some details of what's going on in some of these other lands. So either the Great Isle or on Var Nordos, and we can figure out. Um, you know what what those characters did about about the cult, or um, I mean, even now with the cult kind of fracturing into these different sects, uh, you know which which ones which. Um, alternatively, we could go really far abroad if you wanted, and there's a kind of a, this kingdom over here is a little bit more isolated from the others, and we could just find out what's going on over there, and it would be fully unrelated to this to the, the cult of Melium. Any of those catch your, catch your eye? Oops, my camera. Eventually we'll have stories interacting all around. So Koros is, um, so there's these three isles here. Um, I actually know very little about Koros in the story. Um, we have just one one chapter there so far. Um, so basically each of these isles kind of has a different kind of thing going on because they're, um, you know, kind of separated by the, the water barriers. Caterport has become the most connected with the rest of the lands over the centuries. Um, so it's mostly just like a, a harbor on the edge of the world kind of thing. Uh, which is why it's kind of overrun with gangs and different criminal organizations. Keth, on the other hand, is very uh, kind of like, there's like tribes there that are very spiritual and, and focus on, uh, you know, interacting with nature and not harming it. Um, so they're very kind of, they're, they're a little pacifist and everything. Koros, on the other hand, has reacted to foreign influence very aggressively, and they almost exclusively kill outsiders on site. They're... They're just very, um, you know, this is our land. We don't want any part of what else is going on over there. Any mechanical cities or with Warforged? No, so the, the magic system within the world of Gethra is a little different um, than D&D, &D, and so it's um, a little bit lower magic. Um, and technologically, we're speaking almost a little earlier than the Middle Ages. So nothing like that uh, quite so sophisticated as that. Um, 
And I'm trying to think what would be the closest comparison. There is um, uh, there is a form of magic that is... Um, I mean, this would probably be more like a necromancer or something like that. But there's a form of magic that is uh, essentially reanimation. But rather than your conventional kind of... They just are capable of serving you. You almost have to focus on giving your these reanimated uh, subjects your like will what you want them to carry out and they'll kind of just repetitively carry that out until they're not able to or until you give them a different direction so some sorcerers or groups of sorcerers might have a whole kind of automated little systems that they've that they've put in work almost like factory lines and uh you know different things like that so yeah yeah or yeah in chorus we could definitely have like a barbarian raider you would definitely have some of the tribes in chorus would definitely be like well, let's go pillage somewhere nearby. All right, uh, well, let's go ahead and get started with that then. Start off just by adding a character, and then we'll kind of figure out what your character is involved in. It's uh, one thing I learned early on is to not just do a character snapshot, but rather start with some story as well. Okay, so I'm also going to open up just so that we can, I can refer to it. Um, there was a standalone chapter, the soothsayer. Yeah, so this is a standalone chapter on my uh, website, kind of set during the other events of the Lives of Gethry series, and it's about a, uh, a shaman, basically, from the Isle of Koros, named Kotaktak, and he kind of drinks in, well, he kind of like um, studies nature and all these signs around him and, and tries to discern what is coming. And he kind of picks up on the fact that there is some big change in, in the world at that time. Now, this is much later than where your character would be alive. You would be almost like an ancestor to this to this character. Um, but he, he kind of is able to discern that there is something uh, strange going on in the world. And that actually refers back to the main story where there's a war at that time in history. So um, I was just curious, though. Uh, if any of it would be relevant. So I'm just kind of skimming it a little bit here. Give myself a primer, you know? Eventually all of this stuff will be on the wiki, at least the, the world building details. details. So I think there was something within his religion about um, their beliefs about energy and, and almost like, a, like, like chi or something. Yes. Kuruchar. 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 Cool. 